Jakobinger Britson is going to do in the 1500. He has time to look behind him. 20 years of age, and he is on top of the world. But coming down for a maiden national crowd, Cornwall is the champion. Garouge has won his race, or has he? Has he got anything left? Now Garouge trying to get there. Kipchoge the junior is there. Now Garouge is trying to get to the line. Kenya wins it. Kipchoge takes it. Vivian Chariot's turn. And what a proud moment for her and the Kenyans. The first woman from her nation to take the 5,000 metre title. Vivian Chariot's in dreamland. On the outside, Ollie Hall of Australia comes. Jake Whiteman has just spent. It's going to be Chariot and Hall. Who's going to get it? It's going to be Australia. The gold. Pre order now and make a difference. Experience the ultimate in trail running with the Tarkine Trail Devil. With its impressive combination of eco-friendly materials and advanced technology, this footwear is designed to conquer any terrain. Whether you're looking to run UTMB or simply explore the great outdoors, the Tarkine Trail Devil offers unmatched versatility, support, durability and comfort. Featuring a lightweight and responsive design with loads of support, your legs will thank you as you crush personal bests and conquer new terrain. With our company focused on sustainability and ethical manufacturing processes, you can feel good about your impact on the planet. Also, as a pre-order promotion, you have the opportunity to decide where 10% of your order fee will be donated. All pre-orders will receive their shoes during May to June 2023. Visit Tarkine.com. Often in middle distance running, we'll see the rise of an athlete through their formative years with national championship medals around their necks. And at times, they'll rise from just behind the front pack. And then there's athletes like Luke Boys who almost come out of nowhere making a huge statement in the under-20 Australian 800 meter national final last year, placing just hundreds of a second behind his 2B Australian world junior teammate, Charlie Jefferson. Luke Boys has made a global semi-final, taking his PB in the 800 meters down from 150 to 146, and now is a walk-up starter to any track classic, all within the space of 12 months. And he's a pretty good bloke as well. The former Premier Grade cricketer and self-confessed conspiracy theorist, the fresh-faced 19-year-old is a great competitor, mature beyond his years in every start line he takes to, and brings his own personality and confidence to training and racing week in, week out. Luke, welcome to the Runners Tribe podcast, mate. Good to be here. We've finally made it after the last couple of days of sorting it out. <laughs> yeah, you've had a busy program, so have I, uh, with our yep. respective athletes' commitments. Um Mate, I wanted to start off with just a little bit uh, on your background. You hail from Penrith, uh, which skirts the outer western suburbs of Sydney uh, and the base of the Blue Mountains. Birthplace of Australian cricket icon Richie Benno uh, and also the first grade club for current Australian icon Pat Cummins. Um, you yourself played a really high level of cricket growing up uh, as well as soccer. And you also enjoyed some success in the little athletics and, and cross country as well. Do you want to just talk about some of those uh, years of, of your school sport and uh, how, I guess how you progressed through those multiple sports you were playing at the same time, as well as maybe some of the major takeaways you had from individual sport versus team sport, winning and losing, and, and how it sort of helped your running today? Um, well, I started off, I've pretty much played soccer my whole life up until this year when I I had to commit to a sport. Um, little A's, uh, I don't know, I was pretty good at um cross country back in like year one year two in primary school so mum and dad got me into it um so i did little a's up until under 14s um i won state and i sort of in my little 13 year old brain i'd completed completed everything in the sport so i decided to take up cricket for a couple of years which is a a grueling sport it's definitely a lot tougher than athletics um when something like your whole week can be completely ruined by a dodgy decision by an umpire or something. Um, so I think playing cricket has definitely toughened me up, um, helped me to deal with the highs and lows, um, at least in athletics, normally the highs and lows uh, come about because of my own actions. Um, so I think ath athletics is a much more enjoyable sport because it's a lot less political and you can um, sort of make your own statements, stuff like that. Yeah, fantastic. So 
You race for UCS North currently, uh, but you train with Run Crew during the week. Do you want to just talk us through what that usual training week for you looks like and I guess how you fit in life in general as well? You know, friends, um, you're doing law and communications at, at uni at the moment, um, love playing video games, mountain biking. What, what's life sort of look like and, and yeah, how do you fit into being a, an elite athlete? Uh, well, it's been tough the last couple of weeks, um, especially leading up to nationals. Monday, Monday is usually gym, gym and a run. Tuesday's my big uni day. So I get pretty much try to knock over all my uni classes down in the city and then I can go straight to training. Um, shaves off a lot of travel time down to the city. Wednesday is running and gym as well. Thursday's uni and a session. Friday's swimming in a gym. Saturday's a session. Sunday's a run. Um, yeah, I'm definitely a creature of habit. So every week is pretty much the exact same. Um, but no, it is tough fitting in, fitting in a full-time uni degree. Um, trying to work as well to fund fund my athletics and then trying to fit in social life as well. Um, social life is usually the, usually the one that gets sacrificed, especially especially during the season. Um, so it is tough, but I guess it makes it more rewarding when you put in so much time and effort into into athletics. So when you achieve something big, it really it really means a lot. Absolutely, and and you work at uh, Pace Athletic, is that right? Casually. No, no, no. I, um, oh, sorry. That's, that's your that's your, your teammates. <laughs> <laughs> it's a funny one, actually. I teach at Ready, Steady, Go Kids. So it's a little like, it's like coaching, but also teaching. Um, the kids are really young, like 1.5 to 6. Uh, so it is it is an interesting one. I normally get a lot of laughs out of people when I tell them what I do. Um, but it's a good job. It fits in very well with my running. Um, it's a good change from working something like retail, something a bit more monotonous. Getting to work with kids is is good because they're very unpredictable. They're they're high energy, um, so it definitely keeps me keeps me on my toes. And it's it's just a good change up from the rest of life, really. Yeah, that's great. And and you're still based in in the uh, lower mountains at the moment. You're you're traveling a lot for for training as well. Do you want to just talk us through? I guess how far you you're traveling for for training, particularly when you go into ES Marks to do track sessions which is based in the east of sydney for those who aren't aware and um i guess you know just that commitment that you have to have for for training and and you know traveling long distances at times um well i'm lucky because my coach benson lawrence lives in the mountains as well so if i'm not at uni on a tuesday i can always scab a lift with him into the city um that definitely makes it a lot easier also like having someone to chat to in the car and just pass the time really um a few of my sessions are around um around the Blue Mountains in Penrith as well. So that that makes it easy. Um I actually don't mind traveling into the city. It sort of it sort of changes it up a bit. Going into the city is like the big the big day. The big day of the week is Tuesday, um, going down to ES Marks. So then I can you can always find you can lift for the occasion. It's almost like a competition. Um, because you're traveling down, it's such big prep to get there. Um so it makes definitely makes the trip a lot more enjoyable having to actually travel into the city. I don't mind it at all. Yeah, fantastic. And that segues nicely into my next question, which is about Ben. Uh, you've got a really good relationship with him. And obviously, you know, he doesn't need much of an introduction. Former Australian 10,000 meter record holder, one of the, the best distance runners that Australia's produced in recent times. Um, you've seemingly gone from strength to strength with Ben. Um, and that, you know, it correlates quite well with your results in recent times in particular. How much of a correlation do you think it it does have having that really healthy uh, relationship with the coach and, and trusting one another in Ben, your performances and you in his coaching. And then is there a difference, do you think, when Ben is actually present at training and all your races? Um, do you feel his 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 presence more when when he's actually at the event? And do you think that, you know, when, when he is present that you are performing a slightly higher level? Um, no, I think it's safe to say he's definitely the biggest influence on my running career, nearly, nearly just my life in general. Um, he's a very good role model to have having pretty much already done everything that I would want to achieve. He's, he's already done it. Um, I'll be honest. When I first joined run crew, I actually had no idea who he was. Uh, I'd never heard of him because I didn't pay any attention to like the 10,000 meters, but getting to, getting to know this, this guy from just another guy from the blue mountains, who's been all around the world, held national titles, um, records, been to the Olympics twice. Um, it really shows that, you you can achieve big in this sport coming from coming from the mountains. Um, answering your other question, does he have an influence on my performance? Hundred percent. I um my first race in Adelaide this season. I 
I, I was sick for the race, but I was also very psyched out. Um, having to race with all all the big guys for the first time, I've, I'd never been in an opens race before. Um, I was very intimidated warming up in the athletes only area on my own. Um, it's a big step up from running at like Bankstown Isles to then racing with all these other people. So then I did, when I went down to Melbourne, I had to make sure he came with me. Um, it made it a lot easier just sitting in the warm up, and he would he'd point out all these people. He'd be like, oh, that was my roommate or oh, I, I chat to this guy. And it's all these, these huge Olympic names that I would have been extremely intimidated by. He's just goes up and chats to them and introduces me to him. Um, so it definitely does. It keeps me focused, but also very relaxed in the warm up. Um, yeah, he's, he's definitely a massive, uh, influence on my running. Yeah. Fantastic. And, uh, great coach as well. I, I just happened to obviously try to run crew. So, uh, yeah, I can, <laughs> I can vouch for, for Ben's, uh, <laughs> coaching and running ability that not that needs it anyway. Um, so let, let's just go back. It's, it's funny. It's almost well, 12 months to the day that that breakthrough performance and that incredible 800 meter under 20 final. Uh, for those who are wanting to watch the race, it's actually on YouTube as a standalone race. So you can just type in under 20 men's 800 meter final 2022. Um, it, it was an awesome race. And it's kind of that that was the race for you that you really put your name in, in lights against, you know, Charlie, um, Hayden Todd, a fantastic 800 meter runner from the ACT, Kane Shields, another very good runner from New South Wales as well. Um, what do you recall from that race? I imagine, you know, the last 200 meters might have been a bit of a blur, but, you know, winning silver in that race and, and then the announcement that you were going to go uh, to the world under 20 championships last year in, in Cali and Colombia. Um, do you want to just describe the race and then the, the feeling when you, your name was announced? Well, it was a good piece of commentary by you as well. Um, <laughs> call, calling that race. I watched that back a few times. I know you watched it back at dinner with me the other, the other week. <laughs> but... <laughs> I'll have to edit that out. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, the race was, it was a weird one for me because again, it was my first season really. Um, I'd won New South Wales juniors about three weeks earlier. And that was huge for me. I did, did the world junior qualifier. Um, I sort of saw that as the end of my season. And I remember saying to Ben, I almost didn't want to go to nationals. I didn't care about nationals. I'd, I'd got my time. I won New South Wales juniors. Um, and he was like, no, nah, you gotta, you gotta get going again for this last race of the season. Um, and luckily I was able to, I, I don't really remember too much of the race. It's, it was sort of one of those ones that just, you just go into autopilot um, the training kicks in. Um, yeah, it was, it was an interesting race, just having absolutely no recollection of it at all. But then watching it back, it was like, I'm very proud of it. The way I was able to kick down in the last 200 meters. Um, and yeah, the announcement for world juniors, that was, that was awesome. I, I sort of knew it was coming by then. We'd, um, I'd done a lot of calculations with my parents and I had, I had a feeling that I'd made it, but, um, no, I do remember distinctly at nationals what what got me up for the race was the fact that they got us to try on the australian kit before the race and it's it's a bit of a joke a running joke now in run crew but i, I tried on the australian speed suit and that was that was the one thing that got me up for the race i just wanted to wear that i wanted to have that speed suit um so if i had to put put the whole nationals down to one thing it would be that that speed suit i tried on for the race that's <laughs> awesome has the speed suit magnet made an appearance then or, or or since? It made it made an appearance in my bedroom for my friends that were desperate to see it. Um, <laughs> I was hoping that and, was going to go in that direction. <laughs> and it made one appearance in training in Miami. Um, oh, and it was the worst good. piece of clothing I've ever worn, and it hasn't been touched again. <laughs> but it it is still a um it's still a running joke because it is it is the genuine motivator for why I got to world juniors funnily enough. That's fantastic. And, and we'll go on to that experience at, at Cali and also that base camp in Miami as well. That was, I imagine some of the, the heat training because Cali was incredibly hot and humid. So you've gone to Miami for, I think a couple of weeks and, and done a few um, sessions in the lead up to the world juniors. What, what was that base camp like? And I guess meeting, you know, team Australia, um, probably a lot of athletes that you haven't met or, or spoken to uh, beforehand. What, what was that experience like? Oh, Miami was great. It was, I guess for the age, the age that we were, it was nearly like a holiday. Um, like going to Miami, it's, it was so cool. The university or oh, the college was awesome. Um, getting to do our long runs along Miami beach. Um, that was an awesome experience getting to swim at Miami beach. Like 
these very well-known places just for me to have come from running in the mountains a couple months earlier to then being in an Australia camp in Miami was pretty surreal. Um, I didn't really know anyone on the team. So I met, met a great bunch of people. Um, Miami was an interesting one for the distance group because I would say overall, we were the most, uh, we underperformed the most at Cali. Um, I think primarily probably because of the altitude, like Miami was zero altitude and then Columbia was 1,200 meters or something. Um, the, yeah, the heat training was interesting because it ended up like my semi final. it was raining. So yeah, it, it would have been good to get a bit of altitude training in, but going to Miami definitely made the experience a lot better. Yeah, fantastic. You made the, you made the semifinal uh, with Charlie, um, which I think we we saw as as a you know a, a good effort but as you mentioned i think both of you probably wanted a little bit more you would have loved to make that that global final um you know both of you in in, in your first appearance for australia uh but a lot of lessons i'd imagine from those two races what, what are some of those memories that you you do have from the track um well i was ranked i was ranked 43rd going in so so to finish 21st i was i was really happy with that pretty much half my ranking um i was definitely wouldn't have been expected to make the semi-final. Um, I actually didn't think I did. I thought it was top two in the heats and I knew I came third. So I was like, oh, damn. And then um, all my friends, all the other Australian guys were all cheering, cheering for me. I looked up on the big screen and there was a queue next to my name. And so, so that was an awesome surprise because I oh, genuinely had awesome. no idea that I'd made it. That. <laughs> yeah, I, was, I thought it was top two. So I was, yeah, I, I thought I was out. Um, so to then prepare for the semi-final, I think by then I'd sort of run my final in the heat. Uh, the semi-final didn't really mean much. I nearly shouldn't have been there. Um, I felt like I deserved to be there because I'd done a lot of work leading in. I knew I was better than my PB. Um, but the semi-final for me was sort of just an extra little bit to enjoy, enjoy the race. So I made sure I spent a lot of time taking in the crowd, um, like walking out onto the track, really soaking in the atmosphere. There was at least 9,000, 10,000 people in the stadium by the end of the comp, um, we couldn't even hear the announcer saying our names. So I think the experience, like it was amazing, but it probably ended up getting the better of me. Um, by then, I yeah, I'd run my final. So I, I did, I think I came last in my semifinal. But just to, at that stage where I was seven months ago to have made the semifinal was such a big achievement on its own. Yeah, absolutely. First appearance as well as for Australia is an incredible feat to... Um to get out of the, the the heat so you know kudos to you i'm, I'm sure it's not going to be uh your your only appearance for australia we'll talk about that in a second um i want to talk about this this incredible rise and again you know you've, you've made a semi-final world juniors but you seem to be left off quite a few articles and it's you know it's a lot a lot of chat about charlie and he he goes off to college um later that year after i think winning his final new south Wales juniors title at all schools one of those two um and then he 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 sort of leaves, and then it's it's kind of oh yeah, Luke Boys was the other guy <laughs> in the race, and then you go from strength to strength um, after the the Christmas New Year's period, uh, running a one forty eight five unofficially at a a, a milers meet in in Narrabeen, uh, which I think was just a hand time, so you're out there solo just dropping one forty eight, <laughs> and then the one forty six six, which I think a lot of people in your team and, and Ben sort of knew you had in you, you knew you had in yourself as well, but then you finally realized that with uh, Lockie Raper also running a fantastic 146.5 at the ACT Championships. Do you want to just talk about that four-week um, period, I guess, you know, from mid-December to, to mid-January, maybe some of the sessions that you felt, yep, I'm absolutely ready to run this 146, and then, you know, finally realizing your potential um, at the ACT Champs in mid-January? Well, even going back to World Juniors, I knew I was quicker than than I ended up running. Um, so I think a lot of my training stemmed back from in April. Uh, again, I'd, I'd only I've only really competed now for about fourteen. I only started competing fourteen months ago. I only started running about nineteen months ago um, during COVID. So I think just my natural progression in terms of the amount of mileage I've done. Um, I'd never done any before World Juniors. I'd never done any gym. I'd never done any food stuff nothing like i sort of just i'd rock up to training i'd put the effort in at training and then i'd race um so it was those extra not even one percenters they're big big differences um i put in a lot of hard work because world juniors 
sort of made me realize that athletics is what I wanted to commit to. Um, so I was more than happy to put all the time and effort in. Um, I knew going into Narrabeen, I was going to be, I was going to be quick just on training times. I'd been smashing sessions. I smashed a lot of sessions out at run crew camp, um, over new year. Uh, and I had nothing to lose at Narrabeen. It was, there was a couple of my friends there. It was hand timed. Um, so I thought I'm just going to solo, like, I'm just going to solo and go off, go off autonomy and how I know I've run, um, so I was happy with a 148.5 to go. Like it was a one 1. 1.6 second PB. Um, funnily enough, that time was what got me into the A race at Canberra. I'd, I'd been told by the people, the, the officials at Canberra that I had to run that sub 149 at Narrabeen. So I only found out I was going to be at Canberra about a week before. Um, and then Canberra, I don't know, it was, it was just that breakout race. I knew it was in there. Um, I think everything sort of fell into place perfectly i traveled down that day um i did overdose on beta alanine i think by accident where i've now realized i was <laughs> yeah yeah just not doing Wait, my sorry. stuff right did you say what what was that sorry bet better beta alanine it's just like a natural natural substance that you take um misashi like it's all sports integrity approved stuff um but i read the box wrong <laughs> right so how does that happen <laughs> <laughs> i don't know um yeah, wait sorry sorry box. how like so, excuse my ignorance what is it exactly a, a massage oil did you say no 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 it's just like um you pour it into your drink it's yeah like it's just right, okay sashi one um so I'm like sure my, most oh so it's like a protein powder or like more like a high no it's i think it's something it's like a lactic acid buffer or something okay um, yeah i'd say most people use it uh yeah and i was just doing it wrong um just not knowing. So I did, I vomited four times in the warm up before. Canberra. <laughs> wow. um, <laughs> but I think that sort of took my mind off the race. And then I nearly missed marshalling, sprinted into marshalling. And then I, I had no idea what was going to happen in the race. Like, and I think funnily enough, it all just fell into place and I just felt good during the race. I um, got to 300 to go and thought, you know what? I feel good. I'm just going to keep going. And to see 140 to see 146 six it was a bit bit surreal at first um ben actually rung me and asked me he goes tell me the times tell me that was what you ran i was like yep and he's like hell yeah like <laughs> it was it was huge for me it was officially a four second pb um and then that race was what got me into adelaide the week after so it was sort of one thing led to the next led to the next um so it was a big it was a big month big month in terms of going from a 150 runner to a 146 mid runner. Um, but yeah, I think it was definitely a build up of maybe eight months worth of training that just all clicked on one day. It's, it's pretty amazing. Cause you don't hear about that sort of jump very often. Was it, was there anything, um, you know, in the, the run crew camp that you speak of, like, was there anything that sort of clicked at that time where, you know, you, you might not have thought, okay, th this is the session that's going to get me that time. But what, what were some of the, I guess, the key things that you did? And then maybe have you, have you shared any of that expertise with, you know, other guys who have you know, just broken 150 and, and looking for, for that next step forward? I think the big one was run crew camp. I had two weeks where I didn't have to worry about anything else. Like I'm, I always feel like I'm so tired doing two to two days of uni classes and then doing all the law stuff on top of that. And then working three days, gymming three days, running six to seven days. There's always so much going on. Um, it's yeah. I'm, I'm constantly running under fatigue, which would help me, but then to have two weeks of not worrying about anything, being in the middle of the bush, um, just getting to concentrate on actually recovering finally and getting to eat properly. Um, it was, yeah, it just, again, everything just fell into place at the right time. Um, and yeah, I just sort of went from one strength to the next during that month and ended up with a 146. Yeah. So it was, it was a good, good month for me. And, and just outside the, the running in, in camps, um, without going into too much detail, what were sort of, you know, some of your, your favorite memories in terms of conversations, banter? I know there's a lot at, at Falls Creek famously, you know, when there's 60, 70, 80 guys and, and, and the girls as well, you know, sort of um, mixing up with one another. And, you know, there's, there's uh, you know, whether, whether there's people who want to beat other people or, you know, Strava segments to be in. I don't know what it is, but what were some of the things going on outside of the actual running itself? 
Um, well, I think the the best thing about Run Crew is there is no one competing with each other at all. Everyone is there to help each other. Um, you'll never feel like you're racing at a session. Obviously, you are racing because you're running next to other people, but it's you're not racing for pride or anything. Like there are so many people in Run Crew that if they beat me, I would be just as happy for them as I would be for my own success. Um, I think getting to bond with those people, really getting to know them more on just a personal level considering I don't get to run at like Centennial Park and stuff in on the weekends. I don't get to train at the longest sessions. I don't really know these people as well. Um, really getting to know them um, and run with them. I think it just, it definitely lifted everyone. I know it definitely lifted me. Um, and again, it just made me more excited to go to training, more excited to catch up with these people. Obviously our dinner on Tuesday nights, um, things like that. Just the social side of running, I think really made the performance side lift as well. Um, which is a big benefit, obviously, of how good my squad is. Yeah, that's great. Here's a here's a good squad. Um, the other thing I want to mention the forty seven five that you ran the four hundred at the same comp you ran one forty six. I was pretty impressed by that result, and I didn't actually realize it was that quick. Um, what was the thinking behind running the the four, and and were you happy with that time? Was and also was that before or after the the one forty six? Um, so it was the day after the one forty six. I. Yeah, I, I must admit, I, I don't do any 400 training ever. I, I think I did like four block starts during that week because um, I felt a bit bad going about eight months without doing any block work into a 400. Um, I think having run a 146, I just had absolutely no pressure on me. I was on top of the world. Um, that night, I just like I felt so good. Absolutely no pressure going into the next day. Um, yeah, I think it was a it was about a one and a half second PB. Um, yeah, it's it's good. It um. Yeah, it was definitely what I was hoping for in the 400 to run, to go 47 is what I wanted. So to have two big PBs in the same weekend, I think, yeah, it couldn't have gone much better those two days. It's it's, it's a very impressive weekend. You wouldn't find too many 47s and 146s in the same weekend around any athlete in Australia. It's it's super impressive. So um, kudos to you. And, and as you mentioned, that got you a start on not only Adelaide, but just every track classic this season. Um, it was quite incredible having not made a track classic start list to essentially being a walk-up starter for any track classic, including um, that amazing Murray Plant meet in, in Melbourne where 6,000 people were in attendance at Lakeside. Um, you know, we all saw it on Channel 7 Plus and, and 4,000 uh, at the Sydney Track Classic uh, last weekend. Um, do you want to just talk about Guess maybe you know Adelaide. You said you mentioned that Ben wasn't there and you didn't have the the greatest uh, race. But then Melbourne, you Ben was on the sideline. You you really picked up your performance once again. Ran a great race and then ran one forty six in Sydney as well to sort of consolidate that great race you had in Melbourne. You want to just talk about those two race experiences, but then also having you know across those two meet the, across those two meets ten thousand people in the stands. You know something that we haven't seen on the Australian athletic scene in many years, not just a few years, in many years, um, and and how that atmosphere was for you as an athlete? Yeah, I think um, this season, the biggest thing for me, uh, the way it's panned out, even into Sydney, has just been proving to myself that I deserve to be there. Because um, it, it, especially in Adelaide, even in Melbourne, I found that a bit, I was a bit second guessing myself, like, oh, I, I don't know, this is, I've come up so quickly. Um, so really, I, I think in Sydney was the one where I changed my mindset from worried of like I don't want to embarrass myself I don't want to come last be way out the back um to then going from that to thinking going into the future you know what I can race these guys they're five six years even 10 years older than me but I know on my day I can match these guys um I think it's just sort of getting that mindset um Adelaide yeah again I was I was sick but I was also just shocked by the whole experience it was a big deal for me um Melbourne was awesome. Like the, the crowd was amazing. I, it was better than world juniors. It was the coolest thing I've ever been to. Um, I think the best thing, even though the time wasn't as good as I can run, um, it was good to have consolidate another time. So to all the, all the people that probably watched me go from one forty six to then run a one fifty in Adelaide and thought, ah, oh, like he's a fluke. He's run one good race. Um, to consolidate another time like that was a bit of a, like, there you go. Have, have a look at that. Um, and then again, to go 46 again in Sydney, really. All I wanted this season was to go sub 150. So to do it five times already, um, yeah, I, I couldn't have asked for any more. That's amazing. And you had um, 
uh, your girlfriend Alma in the crowd in, in, in Sydney and, and I'm, I'm sure friends and, and family. Uh, what did that feel like, you know, putting a 146 together in front of, your, you know, it was your home track classic, right? I'm sure you've been thinking about it um, ever since you, you started taking up running seriously. What, what was that feeling like? No, Al- Alma's been amazing this um this season. She came with me to Canberra. Uh, so she came with me to Adelaide, came with me to Melbourne, um, was there in Sydney. Uh, it's great having someone that knows how to prepare. I actually, as someone who is not great with prep, I pretty much listen entirely to what she tells me to do um, because she just knows what buttons to press. Um, that was definitely a big factor in especially all this interstate travel that I'd never done before to have someone alongside me to, really helped me through it all. I think made, made a huge difference. Um, Sydney was great. Just having all my friends and family, friends that I, I speak to that I, from high school, from, um, from uni, having them to actually getting to watch me race. Um, it was pretty cool because athletics probably doesn't get the same publicity as some other sports, even though we're putting in as much, if not more effort than other athletes. So to really get, get that home crowd and, um, get people to come watch was, it was really special. Awesome. And we talked just before um, our interview that uh, 11 days away, I think, is is the heats of the, the National 800. Um, it's it's a big race because you're racing against or have been racing the guys that you're going to be in a week and a half's time uh, on the track classic circuit time and time again now. So you've all got to look at each other um, early season. What's the goals for Nationals and, and you know, is, is world champs, is, is it a possibility? this year i don't want to say too much because i'm a real long shot for world champs um but even being in the conversation is enough for me like i could not have imagined to be anywhere near world champs um i think at the moment i'm still ranked third just because i've raced five races so that's that's awesome um to even have the conversation at at 19 to be talking about possibly going to world champs um considering i wasn't even right racing 15 months ago um Nationals I'm keen for, uh, three rounds, hopefully. I think that will definitely help me as someone who does more mileage for an 800 runner. I'm hoping that sort of um, favours me a little bit. Getting to the final, I think, will probably be harder than the final. With the depth that we have, there will be people that miss out. Um, having eight guys sub 146.7 is ridiculous. Um, so making the final will be a big achievement on its own. <laughs> um, and then, So that's the first goal. And then once you're in the final, like it's championship racing, anything can happen. Um, so I think getting to that final is really the really the key. And then day three, hopefully my my fitness will come into play a little bit more. Yeah, fantastic. I'm sure Ben's going to be by your side on, on the fence as well in Brisbane. Um, I haven't spoken to him about it. We've haven't really. Ben, Ben's not one to talk about the future too much. Um, Eleven days. <laughs> yeah. No, well, yeah, I guess even so. The future. <laughs> yeah, it's not really like we almost go week by week, really. Yeah, um, well. Even my session for this Saturday hasn't been confirmed yet, because <laughs> um, we're just deciding like how I feel then, um, to then how I feel in Brisbane. It's a very, it's nearly a day by day process. Um, but I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure Ben will be there, even if he's not. If something comes up, um, he'll definitely be watching on the live stream and. Yeah, having his support will be, I think it'll be a crucial part of Nationals. Yeah, fantastic, mate. And uh, regardless of how Nationals goes, is 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 a European season maybe on the cards as well, particularly if you if you are sort of still in that conversation possibly for, for world champs? Um, I think at the moment it has to be. It'll be hard because I'm entirely self-funded, obviously. So I'm a bit out on a limb to travel interstate a couple of times. Um, pretty much all my work pays going into that. So Europe might be a bit of a stretch. Hopefully, hopefully it's not. I'll be able to find something. Um, I think I nearly have to go. I'm only 0.6 off the national lead at the moment. So I, I'm ranked sixth, like I'm the sixth fastest time, but 0.6 is not much. Um, all it really takes is one breakout run from anyone and they're a really good shot of making world champs. Um, but obviously a lot of things come down to nationals. World Uni Games is dependent on nationals. European under 23s is dependent on nationals. Um so I think it's more about going for those things that I'm a bit more of a better chance uh, to make. And then if, if Nationals goes really well, who knows? Again, it's championship racing. Um, then I think a European season would definitely be on the cards to try and chase world champs. Fantastic, mate. And and just on the the self-funding, it's, it's 
it's crazy that you, you you know like you said you're ranked third in australia at the moment yet fully self-funded and and um i guess sponsorship's a, a big thing that's talked about as well in, in elite rank ranks um we've seen the on athlete club uh just launched in melbourne um there's talk in in sydney about trying to do something similar um what are your your thoughts and views on i guess um brands really backing the the top end of the sport around australia and how far that might go into making athletes like you be able to get over to more races more often and and, and compete at a high level more often um well i think it's crucial i think it's really really important part of the sport you look at how much time and effort we put in compared to any other sport look at afl players look at like how much money there are in other sports um that unfortunately athletics just doesn't have um that's just the way it is. I think sponsorship and stuff like that, it's it's definitely a critical aspect. Um, hopefully if I can perform, keep performing at this level, maybe even try and go 145. I think with the right, I think with the right right race, I would be confident to say that I can run a 145. I um I was only 0.1 slower than my PB in Sydney, and I ran two bends in lane the outside of lane two, um, run the back straight in lane three, and I'm still definitely learning to race these guys that are so much older. Um so I think if I can keep improving, I'd, hopefully I'd be on the cards for something one day. Um, that's That would be a goal for sure. And time's definitely on your side. You mentioned, you know, 19 years old, you've been racing for a year and a half. It's it's quite extraordinary what you've been able to achieve in, in such a sport, short space of time. I wanted to end with um, Victoria 26, LA 28, and, and uh, of course, Brisbane 2032. I mean, you, you're only going to be... Uh, 28 years old, sorry, in, in come Brisbane, yeah. which that, that's crazy that you still have in your 20s, <laughs> nine years away. Um, So many amazing opportunities, two amazing home opportunities. Um, What does that mean to you as an athlete and having that, you know, almost a 10-year uh, goal if you do decide to stay in the sport? Um, Well, I, I think I would definitely be staying in the sport. Um. Like it took me a while to get here playing on my other sports. I think now I'm here, I'll, I'll be here to stay. Um, it's a once in a lifetime opportunity for an Australian athlete to get to run a home, a home a com games and a home Olympics in their prime. Um, like you can't ask for more. It's great. It's great having those chances, but it's also annoying because look at the depth that we're getting in our events now. <laughs> um, Expect so more where make, that came from too. <laughs> it does make it trickier and it will only get harder next year being an Olympic year. Um, but again, it's, looking at like Brisbane, Brisbane is 10 years away. I've been training for a year and a half, nearly, nearly two years, like a year and a half to two years. So to think how much I can improve in 10 years um, makes me think something like world champs this year. It's not, it's definitely not the end of the world. Like I didn't even consider it two months ago. Um, even the Olympics next year, it's not the end of the world. Um, to make an Olympics at 20 would be a huge deal. So if I don't, again, not going to be too upset. But obviously, it would still be great to set the goal. Um, but I will definitely be looking looking a lot more long term to twenty twenty six in Melbourne, and then twenty thirty two in Brisbane will be the big one for me and for everyone else my age. I'd say. Fantastic. Well, Luke, thank you so much for your time, mate. It's been great changing you, and uh, we're going to be following your progress. Obviously, um, all the best, mate. Awesome. Thank you for having me.